Greetings, this is Charles Darwin, and I wanted to share with you some books that you might want to read, some of my favorites. First, I'd like to start with a book by Adrian Desmond and James Moore called Darwin's Sacred Cause. And ever since I read their other biography of me called Darwin, The Life of a Tormented Evolutionist, I've been very impressed at the scholarly thoroughness and yet also the empathy and the humor that these writers have brought to my biography. This one's subtitled, How a Hatred of Slavery Shaped Darwin's Views on Human Evolution. You know, I was very upset to learn that many Christian preachers in the 21st century believe that Darwinism leads to oppression and slavery and slaughter. And that's not true at all, because it was my hatred of slavery that made me convinced that all humans had a recent common evolutionary ancestry, and that was based on my hatred of slavery. So I would highly recommend this, as well as any other books by those authors. Another book is by Richard Dawkins. It's called The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Now, you may know Richard Dawkins as the world's most famous atheist, and every few years he writes an atheist book. But he also writes science books. This is one of his science books, and he tends to keep his religious views and his scientific views separate. And this is one of his science books. And it delightfully explains the evidence for evolution, everything from the fossil record to the human genome to comparative anatomy. Very good book for those of you who do not know a lot about science. Here's another book called Life of Earth, Portrait of a Beautiful, Middle-Aged, Stressed-Out World. Notice that it's entitled Life of Earth, Not Life on Earth. The author of this book makes the claim that all of life on Earth is a single living system. And he explains, very interestingly, the processes by which that living system evolved. Now, I'm a little skeptical about whether all of life on Earth is a single living system, but you could decide that for yourself. Then there's Franz Duval's book, The Age of Empathy. Nature's Lessons for a Kinder Society. And he explains from his many years of study of chimpanzee behavior how chimpanzees are empathetic toward each other. And that is also a natural inclination, a natural instinct for human beings as well. But it's not always pretty. Because sometimes chimpanzees, just like humans, can become very angry when there is a perceived injustice. When one chimpanzee is getting special treatment, the others can get very angry. Here's a story about a chimpanzee named Mo who had been brought from Africa and was raised by an American couple and then they sent him to a chimpanzee enclosure, a sanctuary. They regularly visited the people who had raised him to bring him special treats and for his birthday they brought him a raspberry cake, drinks, and new toys, which would have been fine if there were no other uh, chimps around, as Duvall notes. But this was not the case. The sanctuary had taken in other chimps from abusive homes and Hollywood trainers. While Mo was feasting on his cake under the eyes of his foster parents, two male chimps in another enclosure managed to break out. They went straight for the husband. My guess is that they would have attacked Mo if he hadn't been behind bars. Even though the incident has gone down as one of the most horrific animal assaults ever on a human, it is in line with how male chimps attack members of their own species. The two chimps chewed off the man's nose face, buttocks, tore off his foot, and bit off both... I can't say it on a public video. Uh, he was lucky to survive, which only happened because his attackers were shot. Anyway, you can read a lot of interesting things about chimpanzee behavior and how that relates to human behavior as well. Finally, of course, I need to mention the huge opus of works by Stephen Jay Gould, who died in 2002. Hardly anybody else has published this much about evolution. Ever since Darwin, the pandas thumb, hen's teeth and horse's toes, the flamingo smile, bully for brontosaurus, an urchin in the storm, questioning the millennium, dinosaur in a haystack, wonderful life, full house, the lying stones of Marrakech, rocks of ages, Leonardo's mountain of clams and the diet of worms, the hedgehog, the fox, and the magister's pox, eight little piggies, and his final book, I Have Landed. So, I would recommend his books for the delightfulness with which they're written and how they can make sense of evolution for, for the average reader. This is Charles Darwin. Tally ho, and on in.